Hi there, it's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And we're at the end of the summer, really even almost into early winter. So we're talking about the jobs that you do in your garden to get it ready for winter. So obviously we're talking about what you do with your dahlias, your cannas, your roses and general clearing up. In the description below, I'll put timestamps to each particular job in case you want to go back and see it again. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel uploads free weekly videos every Saturday. So if you want to be sure of seeing them when you open up YouTube, just click the subscribe button. And if you want YouTube to tell you when there are new videos, then just click the notifications bell beside it. The Middle Sized Garden is about 100 feet long and 80 feet wide. It's an L shape, so it's 40 feet wide nearer the house. We're in South East England, which means we roughly equate to a USDA hardiness zone of nine. And what that means is we very rarely go below minus five Celsius in winter. We don't stay cold for very long. It's very rare for us to have prolonged freezing bouts or really harsh winters. And that minus five Celsius would be 23 Fahrenheit if you're in Fahrenheit. So we don't have very, very cold winters. So that makes all the difference to what you do to your dahlias and your cannas. So let's start with those. I've got a video which I'll put in the description below which says don't dig up your dahlias for winter, here's what to do instead. And I've had comments on it from all over the world. And sometimes people can actually have quite cold winters and they can get away with leaving their dahlias in the ground. But basically, if you do have long cold freezes or if you have very wet cold weather in winter, you will have to dig your dahlias up. If you don't have much storage space, a lot of people, if they do have really harsh winters, they just simply buy dahlias new every year and treat them as an annual. But here, if you've got mild winters, it's really worth saving yourself the bother of digging them up and leave them in the ground. Cut off all the foliage once the frost has killed it off and then pile up manure or compost or even straw on top. I often get a lot of people asking me questions as to whether they should add horticultural fleece or plastic or add a pot, but I really don't think any of that's necessary. The dahlias will either survive or they won't. And you're only going to find out through trial and error. Because you could live five miles down the road from me and leave your dahlias in. If your garden's a frost pocket, they might not survive. But equally, you could live five miles down the road from me and your dahlias survive without even any mulch on top. So it's very much about your microclimate as well as your climate. I also think if you're going to leave your dahlias in, you're doing it because you want easier gardening and really rushing around with fleeces and plastic and pots and things doesn't fit into that. However, there are some other things to consider. If you leave dahlias in for year after year, and I mean five years or 10 years or something, they're going to spread underground and they're going to get a bit out of control and you might get a lot of growth that's really not what you wanted, spindly growth or even possibly the dahlias um, interbreeding with each other and coming up with completely different flowers or blossoms that, from the ones you originally ordered. So even if you don't dig your dahlias up every year, it's certainly worth thinking about digging them up every two or three years and maybe reorganising the garden. When it comes to cannas, when the frost collapses the leaves, then just fold the leaves over on top and once again pile up mulch on top of them. And once again, I wouldn't recommend adding plastic or fleece or anything like that. Your cannas will either survive or they won't, and certainly mine survived last year. I'd strongly recommend putting something in like a pole or a cane to mark where you've left the dahlias or the cannas because otherwise it'll get to spring. Dahlias and cannas left in the ground do tend to come through a little bit later. So you may think, oh, there's a bear patch here and then suddenly stick your spade right into the dahlia or the canna. So then what about roses? Well, the end of the summer, beginning of winter is really not a time for a hard prune of roses, but some roses do need a bit of work. So I'll take you round this garden. I've got five different kinds of roses in the garden and explain what I'm going to do to my roses in the hope that that might help you. 
Some roses get very tall over the summer and particularly this rose here, it gets really quite tall, it's about four feet tall. And if you have a lot of tall foliage and flowers, they can get windrock, which means the wind sort of pushes them around. Windrock is really more of a problem if you've only just planted the roses because their roots aren't very secure in the ground. And this rose has been here for longer than I have, so it certainly isn't going to get windrock, but it looks quite unsightly. So I'm going to reduce this to about half its height. I prune roses at a slight angle so that if there's any rain or snow, it's less likely to sit on the stems, on the exposed stems. But otherwise it's very simple and just remove any dead or diseased branches. The next kind of rose that I would definitely recommend pruning back a bit is a climbing rose. And I've got a climbing rose here, which has got very muddled with a dahlia. And so we've dug the dahlia up because the dahlia had spread far too much. Uh, roses don't like a lot of competition around their roots. So we needed to clear a space there. And while we're doing it, we decided to cut back some of this growth. This climber hasn't got very tall yet, but even so it needs to be either cut back or tied back. So you don't want fronds of roses waving around in the wind during the winter. These roses, they're a shrub rose, they're quite small, they're probably only yes, just, just this high, and they're called Little Pet. And they come out in midsummer, then I clip them back and I get another flowering from about late summer to early autumn. But there's no particular reason to cut these back now. Uh, they don't have fantastic hips, these ones. And that's a, an interesting thing, is that if you want roses for hips, when you're buying a rose, you need to actually look that up um, in the brochure or ask the grower. Now this is called Rosa Glauca and it's a wild rose. And as a wild rose, it's grown to the size that is comfortable for it. I don't really think there's any problem with Windrock. And also I love these sprays with their beautiful hips and that's really providing food for the birds and something for us to enjoy earlier on in the winter. So I'm not going to touch this Rosa Glauca. In spring, I'll probably cut back a few of the oldest sprays right from the ground, just in order to renew it. But for the time being, I'm going to leave it as it is. And these roses in the front garden are called Bonica and they have been very abundant, pretty pink roses, flowering June and they then repeat flower pretty much throughout late summer and early autumn and sometimes right into winter. But these roses have also been in the house for a very, very long time. I think they were planted about 30 years ago before we came to live here and I think they're getting very old. Some roses can really live a long time. You can see roses from the 70s in front gardens quite often round here. But these pink roses are, I think, on the way out. So I'm not going to prune them at all now in the autumn and even when it comes to the spring I'm going to be very careful how I prune them because personally I found that if I prune back an old rose really hard it can just die. And of course particularly important for this rose but for all roses I'm going to put lots of garden manure, well rotted compost in the soil around it to feed the rose for next year. When it comes to other garden jobs, I've found that over the summer, things kind of get kind of left around the garden a bit. I mean, a pot here and, you know, a watering can there. So actually, I think it's really quite a nice idea to just go around deliberately looking for things that have just got blown around or left and picking them up. But when it comes to things like fallen leaves, if you can leave a few piles of fallen leaves there, it's hugely helpful for wildlife. If you leave fallen leaves on the lawn, that's actually going to stop the grass from growing. But if you can leave them around in borders, they'll mulch down, they'll feed the soil, they'll provide shelter for wildlife, and actually all sorts of little bugs live under them, so the birds will go in and, and, and get some lovely meals there. I'm going to do another video next week on what you should do to make your garden more wildlife friendly in winter, and you'll be very glad to know that actually the less you do, the better. But just for the time being, leave a little pile of leaves in a corner if you can. Earlier this month, I decided that the spiral topiary, which was in the middle of this part here, was just too big for the area. And we also weren't able to walk past it. So we decided, I had this sundial anyway in the back of the garden, and I decided to see if the sundial would actually fit this space a little bit better than the topiary. 
and of course it was quite a job to move it. So the way we did it was that we, um, Felix who helps me in the garden and I pushed the pot on its side and then I held the pot while Felix pulled the big plant out. We then put the plant into a wheelbarrow, wheelbarrowed it over to the corner which is where it is at the moment and then we carried the pot between us and then we married the pot and the plant back together and we took the opportunity to add a little bit more uh, uh, compost in the pot. I think the sundial is better in the space than the spiral. I put it up on the community tab on YouTube and asked everyone's opinion and I think about 90% said yes the sundial is better than the spiral and about 5% said the topiary spiral was better than the sundial and then a few people said actually don't have either. It would be much better to have a completely clear uh, path through here. So uh, do leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. And, um, but at the moment, actually, I am really happy with the sundial. If that was helpful, then do please hit like, because then I know you'd like more gardening tips. And if you'd like more tips, ideas, and inspiration for your garden, then do subscribe to the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.